Karish, you can start. When you find yourself cocooned in isolation and you cannot find your way out of darkness, remember, this is similar to the place where caterpillars go to grow their wings. A very good evening to everyone present here. I, Ganeshan, on behalf of the Biodiversity Cell of Symbiosis International, deemed university, would like to welcome our esteemed guest, Mr. Dharmaraj Patil, to enlighten us about the butterflies of Northeast India. Dharmaraj, sir, is a wildlife researcher and environment educator by profession, presently heading environment program at Rain Tree Foundation, working in Malay region. Sir has also worked in national institute, institutes like Center for Environment Education and Watershed Organization First, and as a secretariat member for the Green India Mission Program by Ministry of Education, Forests and Climate Change. Environment forest. Okay, sir. So environment, forests, yeah. and climate change. So he is also instrumental in establishing biodiversity management committees and people's biodiversity registers in 33 villages of Maharashtra and Madhya Pradesh. So he has also written a book for children to understand biodiversity around them. So he is also an editor of eBird Forum, which is one of the largest databases of birds in the world. Before handing over to sir, I request all the participants uh, to uh, fill in the feedback form at the end of the end of the session, which will be shared by uh, my teammate Amit. We welcome you, sir. The stage is all yours. Thank you so much, Ganesh. Thanks, Shilpa. I'll just start. I'll stop my video and I'll just share the screen. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, so we have one hour to finish this. Uh, so basically, butterflies of Northeast India, this slideshow includes, so basically it's a, you know, it's a treat to eyes that you see so many, uh, you know, uh, colorful species of butterflies. And then when you say colorful species, uh, either uh, in the Western Ghats or in the Northeast, you would get so many types of species. Uh, just a second. Can I request everyone to just shut off the video because uh, your video is coming on my screen. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, Shilpa, yours too for some time. Thanks. Uh, so butterflies of this, this slideshow has, uh, as I said, so many beautiful images of Northeast India species. But before that, we need to also know uh, basics of butterflies, uh, what a butterfly is, and, and what are the phenomena of butterfly world. Like there are very much interesting phenomena attached to every uh, group of species, be it birds, frogs, snakes, whatever. So likewise, we'll see first time a few slides, probably focused on what a butterfly is. And then we'll see which are the species which we uh, can see in Northeast India, especially the other species found in Sikkim and Arunachal. And of course in other states as well, but these are the two major states from Northeast where you see so many species and diversity is really huge. So this is an image which just a representation of what kind of, you know, habitat you see in the northeast which is mainly hilly region and you might very rarely you get you know plain land where you build such structures this is basically a military base camp in Sikkim so what a butterfly is so you see butterflies bird easily you can see butterflies so they are majorly divided into three parts as you see in the low image abdomen thorax and head just three major parts which constitute uh, an insect basically. So butterfly is an insect. Although many don't believe that because you're such a colorful, you know, creature and you call it an insect, but it is an insect species. And what you majorly observe and why you like us like a butterfly is because of the circle that you see here in insect is basically the color. So that color itself is basically these are the scales. So when you touch a butterfly, this color basically touches to your finger. Why is that? Because the, these are very loosely bound scales. And those are the scales which actually have a pigment. That pigment particularly gives 
a particular color to any butterfly species. So when you touch a butterfly, you actually remove, these are the scales, those touch to your fingers. So ma major part, if you see, when you identify a butterfly, it has hind wing, fore wing, and the antennae and compound eye. So the color part is majorly the wings, and that is hind wing as well as fore wing. So many a times some species have different colors on the, on the fore wing as well as on the hind wing. Sometimes it's a uniform color. So basis on, on the basis of this color type, you, you identify a particular species, where it is distributed, what kind of habitat it lives in. But as I have used one word here is a pigment. So here the scales, majority of the species have the scale, right? But in some cases, this is a blue morpho butterfly, which is from the American continent. And this uh, butterfly doesn't have the color. Yeah. Uh, what you see now is a sky blue, you know, light blue color. So you would say this is a color. But this is basically an illusion created uh, by light. So when light reflects, when you see a butterfly from a particular angle, you will see that color. But actually, if you catch the butterfly, you try seeing the color, there is no color. So there are two major divisions in types of colors butterflies have. There is pigmentation and second is reflection of light. Majorly, we get confused between these two types of uh, species. One is moth and second is butterfly. So butterflies are normally confused with moths. So on the left, you see the moth. On the right, is butterfly. Uh, you Major difference, if you say, is colorful. Butterflies are colorful. Moths doesn't have this particular, you know, uh, impacting color. But there are exceptions. Second thing, moths are normally nocturnal species. But there are exceptions wherein butterfly is, is butterfly species actually roam in the night. There are some species as well. But some of the distinguishing, you know, you can say diagnostic features, you see here is on the left, the moth antennae are feathered. You see feathers on this antennae and on the right, you see clubs. You know, it's, it's rounded at the end of that antennae. And that's a typical, that's a distinguishing feature uh, between the two groups. One is moth and second is butterfly. Even while butterfly is sitting, you, you can see, you know, closed wings many a times and they open whenever there is sunlight. But in case of moths, they normally are open wing. So they have flattened wings on any uh, perch and they sit on that. So that's the, another difference where the behavior is quite typical. So these are some facts I just I'm mentioning here. You need not really remember everything, but there are like six families under order Lepidoptera. So Lepidoptera does have six families, which is so starting from Hesperidae till Rhyodinidae. Rhyodinidae is newly added family. So there are a variety of species basically. So all the species which we found here, uh, 1500 species in India. So out of those they are divided into six different families. And the very first group that is mentioned here is Spiridae, are the skippers. So basically they are the connecting link uh, between moths and butterflies. Because this is a particular group where the members are very much similar to moths. That's a skipper group. And the other groups you see, they have very colorful uh, you know, species into it. And the largest number, if you see, it's a brush-footed butterflies, which is Nymphalidae family. So if you see at world level, there are 18,000 families. In India, we have 1,500 families. Uh, sorry, not the family, the species. And per family, you have these many species. So largest group is the Nymphalids. Yeah, this is the most common knowledge that you might, you all might have is Life cycle in butterflies is called metamorphosis. Like from egg to larvae, then they grow into a pupa, which is also called chrysalis. Then it grows into a butterfly. So uh, normally you won't see a baby butterfly in nature because butterfly, when it comes out of a pupa, 
it itself is like adult butterfly so there is no small butterfly and it grows so this is a typical cycle in, which is seen in many other insects as well is called metamorphosis there are so these are some of the points i have just jotted down to understand that these are the basics of you know butterfly world so first is variations so butterfly even in we say one species there are different forms so the two major forms that are mentioned here is seasonal seasonal variation which is dry season morph morph is bird word it's a form here dry season form and wet season form okay that's one type of variation you see in species of butterflies then genetic variation would be there then sexual dimorphism is there where male looks very similar sometimes or exactly opposite to the female color so that's a, the opposite color is dimorphism and of course there is geographical variation as well meaning same species of butterfly which is found in delhi so suppose like common crow is a butterfly which is found in delhi and same species in pune they have geographical variations so the size might be different some color gradation would be and that is re, that is a reality for any other group of species as well even in birds you take take any species like oriole or something so they have you know minor differences in color minor differences in morphology as well so that variation is there second phenomena you see in bird butterfly world is mud puddling so we'll talk about each one and then we'll turn to actually species which are found in northeast india mud puddling is basically you know hundreds of butterflies especially male butterflies they come together on any mud path or on the bank of any wetland and so they basically take nutrients from these places so that congregation of one species or multiple species at a location at a single location it's called mud puddling and which is typical of butterflies third is migration so we are we are known about bird migration quite commonly we hear about it uh, but there are some species of butterflies so like in western ghats if there is huge heavy rain happening they just migrate to eastern part where there is a leeward side of monsoon you can call where there is lesser rain so likewise even the temperature change happening swarms of butterfly you will see moving from one place to another and they can actually really they can travel a long distance so that's a type of migration then the most interesting you would see is adaptation because see any small creature needs you no know, capability of adaptation if they want to survive in nature because the smaller the creature there will be more predators attacking on these creatures and second is if they have to hunt as well they need to be camouflage so that kind of adaptation these species do so mimicry is one of the actually it's part of adaptation only wherein a particular species of butterfly mimics some other species or some leaf where they are you know easily uh, merged with the surrounding environment so that is really interesting part uh, which is called mimicry in butterflies so that is for variations what you see these are common few species of common species of butterflies you see around here as well in pune so this is called common evening brown now this is the same species but having three very different images yeah so these are different forms you see so one is wet season form some is dry season form again there is variation within wet season form but if you look at it you would say yeah these are three different uh, species basically individuals but here uh, basically they collect into a single species which is common evening brown this is mud puddling these are himalayan hedge blues uh, which are found in himalayas of course in northeast major india scene and they congregate at one point where they would get water they would get nutrients and one important and interesting thing is that the coloration that you see in butterflies is very much connected to the nutrients they get the sexual selection in butterflies that happens is based based on majorly the color 
Now, how the color comes is from the nutrients. Now, for nutrient, they have to compete with each other within the group. So, normally, a good color in their terms or the bright color is equal to healthy species of butterfly, healthy individual, rather, healthy individual uh, male, especially butterfly is that that healthiness is seen uh, through the color basically in the butterflies so this is mud puddling wherein only male butterflies would come and that can be seen in, in anywhere like here it is nearby a river you would see anywhere there is a and wherever there is like a muddy region or wetness is there this butterfly would congregate and if, especially in north you would see like thousand butterflies coming together as well sometimes including multiple types of As we are talking about migration, so migration in butterflies is majorly unidirectional because life of butterflies, like there are some butterflies having one day life. Okay. Uh, in some butterflies, it goes up to a week, maximum month. Few like monarch butterflies can travel longer distances and they, they live for a long time. Uh, but still, overall, if you see average uh, age of butterflies is very small. And when, whenever there, is, there are butterflies living up to one week or lower than that, uh, they'll be dying on the way when they are migrating. So when butterflies migrate and it reaches some point, it won't return back. And interestingly, that's why where they when they lay eggs, they doesn't need the particular location like birds. So birds migrate from temperate climate to tropical one, but their nesting only happens in temperate climate. But in uh, butterflies, they can have because the, there are no larger distances involved here in migration. So the you know, a climate doesn't change drastically. That's why they at multiple places, wherever the species are, species of plants are involved, which is called larval plant on which they lay eggs. So in whichever uh, region habitat these plants are there, they can use those plants for egg laying. Well studied is of course migration of monarch that you might have seen some of the documentaries where in a temperate climate to middle, you know, south north of south america and central america these monarchs migrate in like lakhs of numbers that's the only population that that is there uh, there are some uh, migrations which are altitudinal wherein higher himalayas butterfly species come down the same way in higher altitudes of uh Sariya, the reduced season butterfly species those come down when there is heavy rain that's altitude migration, which is blue mormon is one of the common species which does this type of migration. There are some distance migrants which, which travel long distances, which includes crow and tiger, crimson rose, emigrants as well. And sporadic records of swarms, like if I am sitting here in Pune and I see some swarm of butterflies, and then I record it, and that's how you get from where to which place they are migrating. And that's one, one of the interesting phenomena. And unless you have those records, you can't really do that migration study. Uh, that's why this, the migration butterfly is the least studied subject. Uh, this is, these four examples are of some of the interesting adaptations in butterflies, wherein this top left butterfly, which is acacia blue, that's a very interesting symbiotic relationship between an ant and the larvae, larvae of common acacia blue. So this larvae has a capacity of oozing out honeydews on its body through pores on its body and that is eaten by ant and in turn ant protect uh, this larvae so that kind of adaptation has been developed by this butterfly larvae there is another larvae of a butterfly which is the khan baron a common baron butterfly which is exactly sitting you know matching with the midrib and other ribs sub ribs of this uh, leaf and you can no but a bird, a majority of the birds would miss this larvae. They would eat it because they can't see so much merged with the leaf. Then the second row left butterfly, which is a basically pupa of common mime butterfly. It looks like a twig, you know, dry twig attached to a plant or some whatever stalk is there. And it has a cut in its you know upper part which is very much matches it with the a dry twig but this is this is a pupa and because it is matching with no you know very rarely any predator would pick it and the fourth example that you see is a common crow larvae 
so some larvae have this particular alarming color on their body, alarming pattern on their body, which basically alarms birds and other predators that they shouldn't eat it because otherwise they have to, you know, regurgitate it because this is poisonous uh, lava. Because they eat some particular species of plants that adds a kind of venom uh, into their bodies. And so predator can't really easily eat it. So in birds, there are two types of, you know, uh, uh, habitat, habits basically, in birds or any other predator. So one is, which is genetically there. And second is environmentally learned. So especially the juvenile birds, they would first eat it because they don't know what, whether to eat this larvae or not. One second, they realize that this is not some a subject really you, you can eat because it's poisonous. So that's how many of the species, even at the adult stage of butterfly stage and larva stage, they are poisonous at that level. There are some interesting mimicries of like the left images you see are very much like a leaf. So from a distance, uh, it's difficult to make it out whether it's a butterfly or a leaf. So this is topmost left is autumn leaf butterfly, which is found in Northeast. The other leaf you see exactly dried and matching with another leaf that is on the ground. It's called orange oak leaf, which is found in Western Ghats as well. Uh, and when it is open wing, you see the right orange color inside it, right in it. And uh, the green leaf you see up there is a banana leaf and the uh, butterfly species here is banana skipper. So basically these uh, larvae, they cut the leaf, they make it roll and they go inside that. So when a bird is coming and trying to eat it, they, their beak won't reach till the larva. The larva is inside it. So that's the adaptation they have developed. For that. that is for the protection of course. Uh, there are some, as I was saying, adult stage, uh, you know, butterflies as well do this, like, uh, which is called mimicry. Here is a denied eggfly butterfly uh, species. The down image, the lower image is male denied eggfly. Top left is a denied eggfly, but female of it. And right is completely different uh, species of butterfly, which is called plain tiger. So this one is matching with so you can't really make, you know, pick out which is which when you see individual photo, which species of uh, this butterfly is. So basically, plain tiger is a poisonous butterfly and female of Danetic fly, fly, Danetic fly is matching with this plain, egg, plain tiger species. How it helps is, of course, many predators would know that this plain tiger is a poisonous one, so they don't eat it normally. And that is that that basically that kind of relationship is benefited by this female of dynamic fly because this is not poisonous but looks very much similar to the poisonous one. That's how it is saved from predators. Now, so there are, uh, as I was saying, there are some interesting uh, butterflies which are found in Northeast India, and that is huge. Diversity and density as well. Like in one square kilometer, you would see so many different types of species of butterflies uh, in the northeast that it is quite mesmerizing. So this is a typical village in northeast India. Uh, so you see so many houses here, and 90% part is covered by the forest area. It's very dense forest. And these are all like not, you know, uh, wrongly planted trees or something. This is all natural. And that's how that is one of the reasons that the tough terrain makes it difficult to cut this off, you know, cut these trees off and then you do some construct some building or do some project. So that's how that's one of the reasons that it is saved, besides the cultural aspects of the communities there. So we were roaming around this village and within the 10 kilometer of radius. We have recorded 240 species in 10 days. And that, that was the highest number so far recorded in one trip. So in 10 days, you see 240 species, like 10 different species a day. And 
that's a huge diversity. And of course, now the images like this cage and someone is there. So this is basically just to show that biodiversity or butterfly life conservation of the species is very much depending on the community there. So this is these are the images from Sikkim basically. So they are the best uh, you can say you know, future holders of what what would happen to the these species or this entire biodiversity. Yeah, so there are some interesting species. One is this cabbage white. Now this is, so when we say there are butterflies of, these are butterfly species of Northeast India, uh, that doesn't mean uh, they would not found in Western Ghats. So there are many species like this one, which is called cabbage white, uh, having this particular white color and the yellow line there you see in the near the head and the black spot on the wing. These are typical diagnostic features of this species. So likewise, there are other species as well, which are found in Northeast India, as well as in the Western Ghats and some parts of Central India as well. So this is one which you would see commonly when you visit uh, Northeast. So my voice is not clear. Uh, it's a little bit cracking when uh, you are talking. Oh, it? So I remove this uh, headphone, then it's... Uh, we can't hear you now. Are you talking? Okay, let's wait for a minute. Uh, I guess he will be joining again. Uh, meanwhile, I request all the participants uh, to put their uh, questions in the chat box if there are any. And also, I'd like to remind that we'll be sharing a, a feedback form shortly. So kindly uh, do fill this feedback form. Okay, uh, just give me a minute. I'll talk to Dharmaraj. Okay, he is joining in a minute, but I guess uh, uh, let's uh, adjust today like this. He had some problem at his end. Uh, Dharmaraj, you can continue with this. Yeah, I'll continue. Huh. All I have to really concentrate to hear what I'm saying. Yeah, we will. Uh, in, there is some crackling voice, but it's okay. You can carry on. Yes, so this was a cabbage white butterfly seen in other parts of India as well. Then you have this one, which is typical of uh, Northeast India, which is called yellow coster. So if we, if some of you have seen or done butterfly watching sometime, then you can match some of these species what you have seen here. Because once upon a time, like if you go thousands of years back this this was a continuous forest and that's why some species you see in northeast are very much similar to other species in the western Ghats, because at one point the different species what we see today were the same species so this one is matching with the towny coster that you see here this is called yellow coster uh, this one there is no matching species here basically 
this is typical of northeast india it is called little ringlet so of the rings the name is there and a very small butterfly and very agile butterfly like you click it and the next moment you would see it it's a very fast flyer so that's the ringlet uh, this one is called bamboo forester so many of the names of butterflies given by basically britishers because that time that study was started and uh, so the names came from the various posts in uh, the defense so there were various colonels and captains who used to collect specimen from butterflies and butterflies uh, butterflies and the birds as well and that led to different museums and that's how they studied uh, types of families and orders and species so this one is called bamboo forester so forester is this group which is one of the rare uh, species which is found in northeast there are very beautiful species this one is uh, amazing one which is called red lace wing because of the type of wing you see here and uh, when there are open wings then you would see bright red color inside uh, this what you see now so upper wing color is bright red and lower wing color is what you see here the typical pattern it has so there are types of lace wings this one particular is called red lace wing there is one species from the same group which is found in the western ghats which is endemic to western ghats it's called tamil lace wing there is one more group called jesters in uh, butterflies which is similar to some of the sailors and sergeant uh, species that we see here uh, in the western ghats and peninsula india so on the left is a yellow jester on the right what you see is blue tail jester so the issue with insects especially the butterflies again is that uh, the study has happened at you know at a group level or family level or order level there are very rare examples wherein some researcher has studied done phd or whatever study detailed study on particular one species so the glamorous species like the monarch butterfly they have uh, people have studied this species in depth but if you talk about this particular species like blue tail jester here you can at the max talk uh, you know what are the nectar plants uh, from where this butterfly get the nectars or the larval plant host plants where they lay eggs more than that there is there is no information available especially on this particular species which are there like out of 1500 there must be like 50 species which are studied in depth where you can talk like we talk on great indian bustard a bird and there is there is enough work happened on the species so likewise on the butterflies at species level very rare detailed work has been done uh this is now you match it with peninsular species is a common map a uh, white butterfly you have here which has map contours like markings uh on the upper wing of the that species and if you just change the color of that like this uh color you see here then that is turned into common maplet so one is common map and this one is common maplet which is typical green eye you see here this image in the left so this is typical of north of india only uh this is again uh but you can say habitat typical level of habitat where is it's hilly habitat uh moist evergreen forest you see here uh this path this muddy road you see here we have just recorded almost 50 species on this particular stretch only so it's not that butterflies you would see only on flowers but they can sit on the rocks and muddy paths and wherever they get the nutrients as well so besides getting nectars or honey from flowers they also need nutrients and water so they can be seen anywhere so once we had visited this place and that was full with this particular puddling as well as individual uh, butterflies also sitting at different locations on the path itself so we are just searching out so many species were there at that time a uh, rock is another perch for butterflies 
So you have different nutrients and minerals in the rocks. And many species we have just recorded on what you see in the rocky wall here. So uh, instead of recording species on the flowers, we have, we have seen more species on these rocks and the mud paths. So these are the common of the species. You might feel like this is a rare one, but this is very colorful, but very, very common in Northeast, which is called Popinjay. It's a Popinjay butterfly seen in the Northeast. This is another group, uh, again, uh, having different individual species within that group. It's called Nawabs. So we have common Nawab here and anomalous Nawab, and there are different types of Nawabs. Uh, this particular is called Great Nawab. It's a very beautiful uh, butterfly. So Nawab again is if you see that era where I'm saying Britishers were there working from working in the defense and they were giving the names to the different species. Likewise, different king's name, Duke is a word which was majorly used. Same way this Nawab name is given by these people that time. And open wing, it looks like this. It's, it's very beautiful. Uh, so this is closed wing, great Nawab. This is open wing, great Nawab. This is very similar to what we see here is a blue bottle butterfly. Uh, and this one particular, what you see here, the image is glassy blue bottle. So the blue greenish color you see on the wings is converted into bluish here. And the width of that width of that pattern is smaller. In case of the butterfly commonly we see here, which is blue bottle. This is glassy blue bottle found in Northeast. So these are all majorly noticed now, not this images not found here. Uh, this is called sapphire group. Uh, there are various species under sapphire group. So this one is a golden sapphire, which open wing you see like this golden color. Now this is not a fresh specimen, so you can't really see, you know, brightness of that golden color. But this is old uh, butterfly. So you can see uh, from the wings that it has traveled a lot. But when you see freshly come out a uh, butterfly from pupa of this golden sapphire species, uh, it's very beautiful and it's very colorful with that golden color color. Another species you see there is purple sapphire. So it looks very similar. If you see outer wing, it's very similar to this one. But the inner color, upper wing color is purple and very small butterfly. It's very, very small. Like it must be one centimeter in width. There are some other interesting species like this Circe, C I R C. Circe is the name of this species with yellow, very typical proboscis here, you see. And this is very much matching with many other uh, types of butterflies. Uh, there are three, four species which looks very similar to this one. So that's a type of mimicry that because two of those are like uh, poisonous ones and they this one particular mimics the other ones. There is one more group called Zizibal. So we have common Zizibal here and which has typical triangular shape of body and bluish eye if you see here. So out of that we what we see here is a common Zizibal which is which has multiple colors. Now this one has majorly dominating yellow color. Uh, called yellow zizible and another species from the same group called hill zizible. So this one, this particular yellow zizible, you would see only in nearby wetlands. So we were searching for streams while we were roaming that forest to just search out this species. So every species has a typical habitat. And when you want to see that species, you just have to scan that particular habitat and not the entire forest. So this is hill, this is yellow zizible and hill zizible is particularly seen on the hillside of that forest. So it's called hill zizible. And this is the river called Tista River. So the, the clean water in the river is one of the reasons that it nurtures so many, you know, diverse species butterflies. And you compare, you know, this kind of river with what we have here in Pune, Mumbai, and you can imagine why we don't have that kind of diversity of butterflies here. So on only on this particular bridge, again, around 50 species of butterflies we had recorded. Because this 
kind of sand which is coming over the tires of vehicles that came on this bridge and butterflies just get attracted to that. And so this is one of the village uh, nearby what you just, what I just saw shown the kind of typical village we have in Northeast. So this is that bridge where we recorded more than 50 species of butterflies. Some butterflies are attracted to particular species of fruits, some plant fruits, which are, uh, you know, that's, that's how the species level of symbiotic association they have. So uh, this is called Sergeant Major Butterfly. Again, the defense type of name. And when we saw this fruit and we just, you know, took out that fruit, which is lying on the ground and took on the road and put it there. And because we just, you know, uh, broken the fruit and it was there. And because of that, uh, uh, you know, smell of that flower, uh, fruit, this butterfly had come in like a minute. So they're very sensitive to uh, what, what they smell in the forest. So this is Sergeant Major. This is uh, one of the common uh, in only some of the habitats, but overall, if you see in the Northeast, in India, it is very rare species called bicolored commodore. This is how it looks open wing and this is how it is closed wing. And again, we had to search only streams there to find this out because in other forest, away from the midlands, streams or rivers, you won't see this species. It's a very beautiful color. Then the first group that I talked about are the family skippers. So they have butterflies which are, you know, very near to the moths. So they are basically connecting link between moths and butterflies. So this is called green olet, A W L E T, uh, which is seen around evening times, uh, very much like you know moths come out that time and they animate till night. But this is one which is uh, which has this crepuscular habit where they come out only in the evening times. It's called green olet. Uh, this is again a very swift flyer, agile species called panther uh, because of the pattern that you see here. And we have common leopard. So leopard is a, another species of uh, butterflies and this is a panther, but there's no connection there. They doesn't belong to the same family or something, but just the names are very common because of the type of pattern they have. This is clicked in Arunachal. Again, from the same family of skippers, this one again looking like a moth. It's a butterfly species called uh, it's tiger hopper because of tiger is because of the color and hopping is the kind of habit it has. So when it flies, it just stops and then again flies and then stops. It's called tiger hopper. So these are some of the interesting streams where we had many sightings of uh, butterflies for particular species. I just said. We had to just search out the streams and we got the particular species there. So these are the roads. So sometimes you just, the roads great, gets blocked in rainy season, in September even, and you can't really cross the, those streams. So there are risks involved as well. By, well, when you are tra traveling and you want to take, click some of the species, which are rare, but you have to also take care of what is happening on the road, landslides or like this, what is happening here in this image. This is an image from Sikkim again, where we had stayed. So this, if you take this location as a center and 10 kilometers of radius, we, in that circle, we saw this as just referred to the largest number of species uh, we recorded, 240 species. Uh, this is Guru Dongmar Lok in Sikkim uh, Lake, where you, uh, where the habitat completely changes, uh, very rare oxygen at that level. This is like 17,000 feet. And some species which you see there are again very different than what you see in the same state at low heights. So like this one. So this was this was 17 feet. This was reported at 10,000 feet. Uh, this is called Ladakh tortoise shell. Common tortoise shell is one species what we see here. In, when I say here, it's Western Ghats and Peninsula India. This is very much similar to that 
tortoise shell, which is called a dark tortoise shell butterfly. There are some butterflies in Northeast which are named by their habitats. So this one is called wall. Wall is a group of butterflies. This is called towny wall. And when it is closed wing, it's not here. So closed wing, it has a different color. This is open wing. And again, it is comparatively a rare species even in the Northeast part. There are very big butterflies like this is palm sized butterfly. This one as well. Uh, the, this particular one, which is called uh, Krishna peacock, peacock is that group. So, Krishna peacock butterfly is found in Northeast only. We have Paris peacock, which is found in our region as well as in the Northeast. And of course, they are comparatively rare than the other species, but it's very uh, beautiful one. If you zoom this, it's, it's like graining of green is amazing there. There are some species like this restricted daemon. They have very long proboscis through which they get nutrient, nectar, water. And so when they have to leave from one place and to reach other place, they just roll this proboscis and then they fly. Otherwise, with this long proboscis, they can't really fly easily. So that's rolled and then they fly. It's a small size butterfly again, 1 to 1.5 centimeters, but Oh, has this typical habit. Dharmaraj, can you tell them proboscis? What is proboscis? Can okay, you show proboscis. in the... Yeah, yeah, it's there. Auto. Yeah. Yeah, here you see the lower image, the sketch, you see the... It's rolled here itself. You can see the blue proboscis means unrolled then it you know it's like it's like a straw so it gets nutrients and everything from the straw yeah here it is unrolled this is called chocolate royal Again, one of the beautiful spaces we had recorded in Namdafa and a uh, very colorful uh, butterfly. And what you see at the tail here, so on the right, you see the head, the eye you see and the antenna. Uh, and at the tail side, you see some similar structures like what you see antenna here. So that's a kind of, uh, you know, diverting strategy for the predators. So when they attack, majorly they would attack wrongly because it's 50% chance they would attack the head or the tail. So there is 50% chance of surviving when they attack the tail. Thinking that that's, that's so you see eye leg structure here, you would see the antenna structures. And these butterflies have the habit of moving their tail continuously, the lower tail, lower wings. They keep continuously moving it instead of moving their head. So that predator gets attracted to the tail more than the head. So when they attack, I mean they attack the tail, they partly it would be broken, but still they survive. So that you would see in many species of butterflies. So this was chocolate royal. This is one of the hit species, one of the most glamorous and very rare as well. Very beautiful one. And it's a palm-sized butterfly. It's called Northern Jungle Queen. That kind of pattern it has is like amazing. But in the forests of northeast you would see it anywhere especially nearby you know small houses and kind so this image was taken at the drainage side of a particular house there in the village so because the forest is so continuous there so there is no difference between where is a you know national park and then uh, city is there or something so this was taken in a village in the drainage of that particular house and there were like four or five individuals of this species called Northern Jungle Queen. And the most rare of Northeast, uh, this is clicked in East Eagle Nest Sanctuary of Arunachal Pradesh. And uh, this is one of the most, most beautiful. And many people would go to just, you know, click this species, which is called, and the name itself has the glory word in it. It's called Bhutan Glory. 
and it is very you know it flies at very you know at higher level that you can't really click it easily so this was sitting on a at a height on a train i had a good lens so i could click it otherwise you just we we just start started naming it you know differently that time we called it like a you know predating bird or something it's like a predator birds uh you know raptor's flight which is normally at a height so this butterfly flies at that height instead of coming you know uh, downwards where you can easily click the species it's called bhutan glory so there are few slides at the end where you you can of course understand how conservation has to be done and this is applicable to all the species not only northeast uh, conservation of habitat especially the corridors is one of the important thing because as i said jungle queen the butterfly uh, we had clicked in a village and there is no difference between national park and that village biodiversity there uh, so if you compare that with what is happening in our region it's continuously fragmentation of forests happening there is some new industry comes up or road whatever it is it divides the forest and when there is forest division then one particular uh, forest patch acts like an island where uh, that species won't be connected to other patch of forest and that's how inbreeding happens so inbreeding is what is happening in case of asiatic lions in gir so the entire population of the world of asiatic lions is in gir which is started from 20 lions till now whatever 1000 1500 number but there is no genetic variation in case of tiger there are different patches of forest but still tiger is communicating or moving from one location one forest to another forest and they mate with the other tiger at a long distance and the variation of genetic variation particularly remains the gene pool of a species is conserved so when there is no strength in the gene pool this there is very likeliness of a particular species getting extinct soon so corridors uh, especially need to be protected which connects larger green belts uh chemical pesticides is one of the major issues uh and it is widely used some of the locations now like sikkim is a organic state now but it, many other states including northeast and the peninsula india they have uh these chemicals rampantly in use and which uh you know it's is destroys species like anything and it includes even birds so insects which is a lower group which is rather more sensitive towards this chemicals and pressures and so they get extinct easily so com- you know completely replacing chemical pesticides by organic is the only option we have and it these pesticides has reached like humans as well the cancers and all are increasing third is maintaining original soil during developmental works so if you see in pune what is happening uh soil which is there in gardens and even in housing societies it's is completely replaced by cement or the uh, paver blocks where you know soil is gone and no nutrients would be there for a butterfly there won't be any mud puddling there won't be any a bird bath like birds need soils to take bath so that all is gone and that structure in the ecosystem is gone so we need to protect these soil places instead of just replacing everything by cement so streams example i just shown how many species are connected to wetlands and particularly streams so we need to protect streams understanding species wise status so that is very rare as i was referring to some species where there is detailed work which is yet to happen and so we don't know the status of species in especially in birds you can clearly say which is endangered and critically endangered and is considered vulnerable whatever as per ius in criteria but in case of butterflies we don't still don't have data so when government declared a blue momon as a state butterfly of maharashtra there was no any meaning i mean it just they just declared it because it looks you know beautiful so we need something scientific status to these species then only we can say yeah this is of priority conservation level and something which can be protected later so we don't have the data we need to get that and then only we really put you know put forward some work which would be really called conservation action and the last which i keep for every slide show is starting from yourself so 
saying that some conservationists would come and they protect or the government would protect that won't happen wherever you can have your influence you just do that so like in society you can say some part which is in soil uh, and so if the uh, manager or someone is planning to have paper blocks there you can just stand against it the same way wherever you can do you can do and then you can plan you know you can make a larger group of people who can support conservation works or you can join some of the organizations which are working towards conservation so that that's how it starts instead of just you know uh, uh, showing fingers to people and organizations and the government who would do conservation that would that way it would never happen and here are some species of you know butterfly attracting plants so on the right is the name of the butterfly and the left is particular species so citrus is majorly you can try at home even you can just plant the tree in, uh, at home and then you would see some butterflies getting attracted towards that and to know more you have these resources uh, the slide the website that i have written uh the first one is i found butterflies.org by krishna mekunte and that's a really beautiful source to understand butterflies to basically to know distribution of species which are found in which area uh, so they have photographic records and they are plot those you know locations are plotted on a map and you would know yeah this is particular one which is now found in is not this or found in only andamans and all that data is there and all the images so suppose jungle queen is there so you just put the name and you would get distribution map you would get images of all the stages so there are images of eggs of that butterfly there are images of pupa of that butterfly larva of that butterfly so everything you would get so it's easy to start with to understand butterflies a uh, second one is the book of india indian butterfly so book of indian butterflies indian birds and this is all series of books by bnhs so as a kimkar has written this book and the third is not the latest book but it has detailed information about butterfly world more than a particular species so that's also is a good book by again krishna mekunte butterflies of peninsular india so you can just check these sources kiap this is one last butterfly called striped punch it's very small again small type of species type of punches it is punch is a group of butterflies this particular one is called striped punch found only in northeast again yep thank you so much and sorry for this disturbance uh, it could probably because of my headphone so i have given my email id number if you want to connect again if you have not understood your question so you can ask now as well thank you so much yes thank you dharmaraj uh, no it it was it was uh, still a very gripping presentation and talk uh, so thank you very much uh, ganesh uh, you can uh... yes i request all the participants uh, to fill the feedback form form we have uh, shared it in the chat box and uh, if anybody has any question to dharmaraj sir kindly put it in the chat box we will be uh, happy to address that so we have uh, one question from amit so he says biodiversity is important for ecological balance given the life span of butterfly what is the contribution of butterfly in biodiversity and what is the effect of climate change on these species of butterflies yeah that's a good question uh, so butterflies are similar insects which majorly do the pollination part in the nature if you remove those from the nature there won't be any trees or shrubs or herbs growing on the ground so there won't be any forests that we call today in case butterflies are taken out so they are the major pollinators is one thing and second important part is they are the major prey base of different types of predators like in case of absence of butterflies there won't be birds around because birds have the major food part the prey base which are insects and in that butterflies are the major ones so that's the prey base importance 
And second question regarding uh, climate change impact. Of course, it does have climate change impact. And as I was referring to, you know, sensitivity of a particular species, which is which goes to a higher level when there is a size decrease. Like smaller the species, more the impact of climate change. So climate change impacts everyone, including us, but more on the insects as a smaller fauna, and of course on the uh, butterflies as well. So uh, when I was talking about migration from high altitudes to low ones, that gets majorly affected. When they migrate from higher rainfall region to the lower rainfall regions, that is also impacted because rainfall changes climate change impact, temperature changes climate change impact, and that's how when you make any smaller change in their normal habit, it is very likely that they would go extinct. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah, anyone else has any questions? I guess there is one more question in the chat box. From... Yes, sir. Uh, the question is from Garima. So she says, how can a common man without much knowledge about the species of butterflies can contribute in the conservation of butterflies? Okay. Uh, all right. So as I was saying, major part, which is in... While we are talking about wildlife and biodiversity and nature and environment, everything, the major part is conservation. And conservation would be majorly done by only common man, not by scientists. So we need to remember this. So when I say uh, birds in Pune should be protected, it's not within the capacity of an expert on birds. It has to be done by common people. So in case of but butterflies or any other, I would say, creature, you start protecting habitats which are nearby you. So starting from even uh, what smaller plants you have at home or in the society, adding number to that, like more doing more plantations, protecting critical habitats like a wetland is a habitat. So I had initiated a movement to protect Pashan Lake, to, to protect Mulamutha Bird Sanctuary we have at Yerauda. So likewise, we need to participate those movements which support conservation works and at your level also, you, so that is at your level as well. Like participating a movement is also important because movement won't survive without participation of a common man. Secondly, uh, wherever you are around you, what is happening, you need to keep a watch. Like even a smaller tree is being cut in my society, I have to say something against that. Because law is on your side. There is a tree act which tells that, you know, ram randomly no one can cut trees. But no one is standing using that tool of law. That's the problem. So you do that at your level and you join movements at the same time. That, that is enough to do conservation. So with this, Dharmaraj, I would like to uh, tell you that uh, for the first time in my own society, uh, I have um, started my <laughs> little effort uh, regarding butterfly conservation. Uh, after getting successful result in the campus, uh, I started one small garden in my own balcony. And though I stay in the middle of the city, uh, which is completely surrounded by only concrete uh, buildings, uh, I got a result that in my uh, building on the eighth floor I stay there are um, many butterflies which are coming in my balcony also oh. so when I saw that uh, result then I have sent mail to my chairman and secretary in the society that let's uh, plant or keep a small area aside for butterfly uh, garden where we can plant uh, host plant and nectar plants which can attract butterflies otherwise we plant only you know hedges of duranda or palm trees and yeah. all so right. that's one small effort which I have started uh, at my end mm -hmm. great great we had uh, published some images in newspaper from the location that I was referring to, Muramutha Bird Sanctuary at Erauda. 
and some of the butterflies so the images were of butterflies died on the floor just because of cementing that was happening there so few uh, particles of cement got on those butterfly wings and they couldn't move and that was horrible image of a uh, blue tiger butterfly i remember so we had published the next day and we formed a group of residents of kalyani nagar and uh, irauda so that is the movement that we are still running uh, we met some ministers and all to take a step to protect this that sanctuary because it's in the center of the city and there are so many like 110 species of butterflies we have recorded and still it is not properly protected so yeah butterfly is quite a indicative species which can talk about habitat and every other restorations and conservations happen yeah uh people you can even unmute yourself and ask directly in yeah, you can ask that It did not be a question, even if you want to share whatever actually part it. That also. <laughs> so, so the one factor I really was amused that, uh, to learn today was that there are poisonous butterflies too. <laughs> yeah. So I never knew that. And yeah. Okay. Yes, so in case of you know word poison or poisonous. it is quite subjective oh okay so it's not poisonous to us we need to understand it's poisonous to their predators like how bird it is poisonous now there is gradation whether that you know poison would kill us other species or not so in case it's just you know, uh, irritates the predator it doesn't kill the predator right way okay like the dart frog we have in amazon that that kind of venom can kill a man or other species but in these butterflies it just to irritate the predator so that the predator won't eat the species again or try eating it again so that level of uh, poison is there alkaloids are there basically it's not poisonous in the terms of like poisonous snakes and all yeah we need to understand that what is sir thank you How many are awake after this lecture? <laughs> oh, all are awake. Okay. I I guess. <laughs> also, we request all the participants who all are uh, who all are present with us to uh, kindly turn on their videos for taking us. Yeah, I think uh, we have come to the end of the session, and Dharmaraj has given his uh, uh, email ID and even number. You can contact him any time. He is. Uh, very approachable that way, and those who are in Pune, uh, they should and must take his help, guidance in anything related to birds and uh, butterflies, insects, and he is also a part of Mulla Muta River um, conservation. So he is one of the director of Jeevit Nadi Foundation. So uh, people, we must take uh, his guidance in that way. Hello, Gargi, ma'am. Good to see you. Yeah, hello, Shilpa. It was nice. Yeah. I love the session. Thank you, thank you, ma'am. Dharmaraj Gargi, ma'am, is a uh, head of our Symbiosis School fraternity. All the schools. Yeah, hello, Dharmaraj. It was really uh, nice. Quite amazing. Lots of things that, I mean, uh, that I got to hear, which was completely unknown. Thank you. And Gargi Ma'am is keen to have a butterfly garden in the school premises of Symbiosis, and right, right. Now, very, and that very... is why I thought I should attend this session. <laughs> Thanks, Ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, Shilpa. So uh, I guess uh, we will end this session now. Uh, if anyone has any question, you can shoot right away. Otherwise, uh, we can go to the uh, thanks note. Uh, so nivedya you can go ahead yes ma'am 
uh, so from the childhood itself i was very curious to know about the uh, color change of butterfly i'm glad i could understand about the loosely bound scales along with the concept of pigmentation and reflection of light with that i came to know about the interesting facts of poisonous butterflies and great nawabs and a known unknown fact that butterflies can be found in mud and rock as well so thank you so much sir for this insightful session on butterfly and also shilpa ma'am for giving us this opportunity for conducting such an amazing session and thank you all the participants for joining in have a great day ahead thank you so much thank you